thank you for tuning in to Liberty Scales. Today we're going to calibrate the Defender 3000 indicator. And we'll go over some of the parameter settings first to show you how you could uh, uh, set up the correct accuracy as needed. And then from there, you could learn how to calibrate this unit. Uh, it could be confusing to some people uh, as far as calibration to others, super, super easy and simple. Of course, O-House has made it real easy by having uh, proper indicator manuals on their website. Of course, under the this video, we would include the link for you guys as well. So let's let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is preset your capacity and accuracy so you can get started properly. We won't get into the calibration settings first, although it is one of the first options. We'll get into the setup menu. That's what we want to do. So first, I want to show this to you guys so you can see what it looks like as far as the settings. You could also pause the video or you could download the actual manual as needed if you need to go over it. But basically, there is a couple of different options here as far as capacity unit. What 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 uh, unit are you calibrating it in? If you want to do a single calibration or or dual, if you wanted to have what capacity you want the scale to have, what graduation, and if you're doing the dual, then it would use that as well. If you're doing a single point calibration, which 99% of the time that's what people are doing, then you would use the single power on zero. If you are powering the scale on, do you want it to automatically zero out? Yes, we do. Power on unit, what unit do you want it to be left at? Grams, kilograms, pound, ounce, pound, ounce, and, and T for ton. We put auto, so that just leaves it at the last unit that you kind of left it at. And so when you start the indicator, it would start off at that as well. Auto tear, okay, so automatically tear. Some some applications, let's just say they have uh, something on the scale. So when they turn it on, they don't want to count that. and uh, Or some app, some applications do want to count that, right? So off, on, except. So that's what it is. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at this indicator. It has the menu, right? Menu and tear in one. Function and mode. Print and unit on slash zero off. So they all do different things. If I were to just hit print one time... It would print if I were to hold it down it would change the unit right so each button acts uh, differently depending on how long you actually hold the button down so for example this button if I were to hold it down go to grams hold it down again kilograms hold it down again comes back to pound okay and we had previously calibrated this indicator so let's get started real easy first you hold the menu button and it'll give you a menu then it goes to cal if i start the calibration from here i'm not i'm skipping the setup section so basically this indicator uh works with yes and no type of uh, setup so basically you press no i don't want to calibrate it yet but i do want to go to the setup so yes it says hey do you want to reset the whole thing no not necessarily i just want to basically go through it so i say no then it says, all right, well, let's get started. So uh, the first thing first is the unit. Let's just check on that. Say, so, yes, I like to enter into the units. So do you want to calibrate in pounds or kilograms? Let's just say I wanted to calibrate it in kilograms. I would say no, right? It would give me kg. If I like that kg, then I would press yes. So in this particular situation, I'll just say no, and it goes back to pounds. So I'll press yes. I like that. It goes, all right, let's do the range. Let's enter range. I want to calibrate in single range, right? I don't want to do the dual counting. But if I wanted the dual, I could, I could say no, and it would take me to the dual. I'll press no again. It takes me back to single, and I'll press yes. I like that. All right, as far as capacity, let's enter capacity. Okay, so I've preset this scale, floor scale, to 2,000. Floor scales are usually at 1,000, 2,000, or 2,500. 5,000 or 10,000 and some applications 20,000, right? But most scales out there, 5,000 is plenty for a lot of applications. So let's just say I didn't like the 2,000 that I have here and I wanted to change that basically here. So I would basically press no. I don't like what I'm seeing here. And it would give me the zero. If 
from here, I would so let's just say I like this zero here. Um, so I press yes, and it would shift over. And this is what I needed to change. So I press no, 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 and it's at 5,000, right? And you could also work this button as well. You could press the function, it would, it would decrease, and this increases. The print button increases. So let's just say I, I like the 5,000. I press on and off, so it moves over, moves over, moves over, and then moves over again, right, for the last time. And then from here, I press again the on button, and it starts flashing. This means it's, it's basically telling you, hey, are you good with this 5,000 pound? If you say yes, you've saved the capacity. If you say no, it would get back into that parameter again, and then you could change them one by one. I'm good with the 5,000, so I'll press yes. Okay? G-R-A-D, graduation, your accuracy. Okay, this is the next step. So less, yes, I like to get into there and see what's going on. It says one pound accuracy. Let's just say I wasn't happy with the one pound and I wanted a better accuracy. Let's see what options. So I say no, it'll give me two pounds. No, that's not good enough for me. What about one more time? Five pound, no, that's higher. Point two. okay, that's good. That's really good. But I've preset my scale to 5,000. It's not about just parameters. It's also about what the capability of a scale is, right? This is an industrial floor scale. Usually at 5,000, the best you could get is 0.5 or half pound accuracy, not 0.2. If you had 1,000 pounds, you could get 0.2, but not at 5,000. And most applications don't need 0.2. You know, at five thousand pounds, what are you weighing that needs to be that have to, has to have that kind of accuracy, and go all the way up to five thousand? And if you do, it's no issue. But your load cells should have the capability of doing that. Your structure have should have the capability of being able to answer that kind of accuracy and capacity. So in this particular case, let's just say no, 0.5. I like that, right? So I say yes. I'll accept that. All right, it says, okay. So next step is P0 on power on. Do you want it to just zero out? I'll enter into it, say, yeah, on is good. Confirm that. Power on unit, leave it on auto. So whatever you left it at, it would just show up. And then auto tear off, right? We don't want it to automatically tear an object, right? So we'll just press yes. And it says end and press yes again. Then it goes back to the main basically menu from here no we don't want to get into read mode and by the way all these are they exist on on the manuals as well but i do want to get back to cal so i want to actually calibrate this scale so i've set my parameters and i want to calibrate it i'll press the on and off say yes i want to calibrate so this is the zero calibration steps right and uh, it zeroes out the scale now i want to say something if at any point you guys i'm going too fast you could simply pause the video you could go back right you have those options so i want to zero out the scale press the on and off button right it's going to blink a few times and then i'll press the on off and so you see a c and it says done clear right now this is the span this is where we get into the actual calibration of the scale as far as putting the weight on the scale. So yes, I want to get into the span. And it says, okay, do you have 5,000 pounds? And I'm like, hey, this is like way too much, right? I don't have 5,000 pounds. No, but I want to change it. They're like, okay, so I press yes to move on to the next phase. From here, I don't have 5,000 pounds to calibrate. Right now, I have about 100 pounds here as far as calibration weight, as you can see. So I want to shift over again. How do you shift over? You say yes, right? Every time you're confirming yes, you're saying yes to that basically number and moving over. So if I would put a one here, would that be sufficient for what I'm doing? Yes, that's correct. So I'll press the button right here. And again, you could press this one or this one, right? It would both change the numbers. So it's at 100 pounds. Great. I do have that 100 pounds. Press yes. Yes and yes, right? One more time. This is the tricky part. This is the part that you have to actually put the weight on the scale. If I press yes here and I don't have anything on the scale, it wouldn't calibrate correctly. So let's lift that 100 pounds that we have. Take the hook off, right? The hook is not part of the weight. 
and we don't want it to be part of the weight, right? So I have that 100 pounds sitting on the scale. So I'll press yes. C, done. Very well. L-I-N. This is if you're trying to do a linear calibration, meaning calibrating in steps. No. Thank you very much. I'm good. Press no. Geo settings, no. No. And no. Right? When everything is done, I can just press the menu button to go back to the regular weighing mode. I want to be able to test the scale, right? So I just, it reads by half pound accuracy. You see when I press her, press down on the scale. And if I just leave it, it's at 100 pounds. Let's remove the 50. Would it show me the 50? Correct. It does show me the 50. So this is how you calibrate the Defender 3000 Extreme Washdown Indicator or the Defender 3000, which is the 33P. Both models have the same capabilities as far as parameters. Um, one of them is washdown, which if you buy this indicator from us, we will provide you with the proper cable and we will tell you what the correct wiring is. Red is excitation plus, black is negative excitation, SIG plus, negative SIG, and ground. Once you buy these indicators from Liberty Scales, you'll be able to just hook them up to your junction box. If you have an old floor scale, you'll be able to hook it up to that or a bend scale, and you'll be able to simply use this video to calibrate it. Uh, if you have any questions, of course, you can reach out to us at info at libertyscales.com. Thank you so much, and have a great day. Bye-bye.